Hey guys, this is Davey T from Field Sports Scotland and I'd like to bring to you another episode from my reviews. Today we're going to be talking about Zeiss products that I've had on loan for a couple of weeks now. I spoke to Zeiss, um, Zeiss UK, about three, four weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago. Actually, I think it was before the British Shooting Show. And I asked, look, I always do high-end products for you. I always do, like... Things like your V6 and your HT models and stuff like that. What I would like to do is um, a review on some of your lower end products. Now, when you talk to Zeiss about lower end products, uh, they don't have very much in the lower end because of the fact that they do mainly produce high end glass. So even the lower end products demand quite a good price. Well, what they came up with and said, well, they've replaced the Terra range with their uh, Terra range of rifle scopes and they've replaced it with the Conque Conquest V4. Now, I've been seeing a lot of reviews coming out of the States in regards to the Zeiss Conquest V4. A lot of guys over there are liking how lightweight it is, how good it is in low light in regards to um, um, its transmission being 92%. Um, and how easy it is to use when you're out in the field. And when you've got the higher um, magnification range, this one is a 6 to 24 uh, by 50, the Zeiss V4, a lot of the guys are liking its versatility out to longer ranges. Now, I asked for one with a BDC reticle, which they sent me one with the ZMOA reticle which is absolutely fantastic. It's fully illuminated. Uh, I'm not a big fan of illuminated uh, reticles, so um, bear with me on that one. So, as I, as I said, I was looking over the, the kind of other reviews that uh, was happening in the States and elsewhere in regards to the, um, the Zeiss Conquest V4. And I was quite curious about it. I wanted to try it. I wanted to give it a go. Now, I just recently done a price check on um, on the Zeiss V4, and you can get it for around the seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred pound mark, which means it brings it into the mid range, the lower mid range of the scope market. Now, usually when I talk about mid range, I'm talking about the six hundred to one thousand, or even as high as the 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 thirteen hundred mark. Um, so that £600 to £1,300 is usually what I would call your mid-range. So your £600 would be low to mid-range, your £1,200 would be um, um, mid-range to high, high-priced ones. Now, so this is right slap bang in the middle of that mid-range market. So it's there to compete with things like um, the... the, uh, the the Delta Strikers or your Bushnell ELRSs and I think they've got the DM2 but that's slightly higher range now um, your um, um, some of your kind of uh, Smith & Benders, Minoxes um, and uh, the Callus C area and, that, and most of them in that market most, I'm not saying all but most of those in that kind of mid-range market are all second focal plane so that makes a kind of big difference on how in regards to pricing as well now don't get me wrong there is first focal plane uh, models of um of competitor brands out there like the Bushnell ELRS uh, um, his series has its first focal plane and there's a couple of others that are first focal plane now the one that I picked was kind of a half target, half hunting scope. And this one, the 6 24 has been used a lot with hunting and target shooting over in the States. So again, I wanted to do a little bit of kind of research on that and how versatile it is to bounce from one to the other. Now, on my first um, look at the scope, it is really the same kind of quality, same build. Same kind of movement, same glass clicking turrets. Um, it's got an open top turret, uh, an open um, top turret, which means that you can, you don't have to take any caps off um, to to uh, just uh, to dial your dope or anything like that. 
Um, it does have a capped windage turret that can be set and it's your traditional kind of lift up once it's set. Um, now a lot of guys don't use the windage when, to be fair, it's range work that really you use your windage a lot or you've got a lot of time on on your um, uh, on a target you you use you can start using clicking your windage however with the ZMOA turret you have your MOAs to the left and right uh, on your windage scale as well as your elevation so that allows you to do your holdovers or your holds uh, your Kentucky windage when you're in kind of that uh, when you're adjusting in the field now as I said the quality of this and you get a lot on the scope for the price. It's just very similar to the Zeiss V6 that I paid um, I paid £1400 for uh, to put onto the, the 6.5 Creedmoor. I mounted the Zeiss Conquest V4 onto my Tika T3270. Now normally I use Optilock rings and but I decided that I'm just going to take off the normal scope that I have on it and I would fit a rail. So I fit, fitted a, a, a Tika a Zero MOA rail to my rifle specifically for to test the scope. When I did this it gave me 50, after zeroing, it gave me 50 MOA elevation which meant that I was good out to 1600 yards on the turret and a lot further on the reticle if I got my um, if I got my uh, my dope correct, my, my data correct. Now I was using it out to 500 yards, not a problem. Um, I never got a chance to do it any further but I was, uh, it was clicking and it was tracking fine when I was doing all the tracking tests. So in that sense it is a fantastic scope. Now everybody talks to me, tells me that the 270 so optimum range is about 450 yards. Well that's rubbish because I proved this even with uh, a non-dialing scope with my last review on the 2.5 to 10 by 50 Victory HT where when I used uh, the reticle uh, to drop into a pumpkin I dropped 5 rounds centre mass to the, off the pumpkin, pumpkin at 500 yards as some of you might remember. So. I don't underestimate the, the, the 270 and the 270's ability. I do, however, underestimate the round that I've put through my 270 because it's only got a ballistic coefficient of around about 0 0.37, which is not ideal for long distance shooting. However, in a hunting condition, I decided I'll take this uh, after zeroing and we're going to mop up a few hinds, red hinds, which I'll show you pictures of. And I was shooting above 300 yards. I didn't have to dial, I used the reticle. I, um, I dropped all three on the spot, three rounds, three reds, one after the other. Now, tracking those deer in the scope was very easy. I uh, did have to drop back. I originally started off shooting using the full, time, uh, full 24 times because it was above the 300 yards. But then I realized that my field of view wasn't very big. So I pulled it back to 18 times and I got a perfect field of view of all the 15 deer that were um, that were in that herd. Picking out the, the two youngest hinds uh, and uh, a slightly older hind, I, uh, I, I'm a, a very mature hind, I dropped all three one after the other in quick succession. Now I really liked how I was able to keep the scope on target and move with the target, watching for each one to drop. It, the, the, it, over, it just over 300 yards, it was crystal clear. I was able to see them in even the long bracken and I had no issues. So to me, that's all I can ask for for a hunting scope. Don't get me wrong, uh, other scopes in that bracket, uh, in that mid-range bracket, you'll tell me, yes, they're just as good and they can do the, the same job, but they do lack some of the refinements in the engineering that um, I have come across when I've been reviewing Zeiss products. For instance, 
With the SHV, for instance, the lower end of the mid-range that I reviewed last year, and the Delta Titaniums that are around about the £600 mark, I um, they were cap turrets. And again, like the windage turret on this one, they were very plasticky and basically easy to move. So if you kept the, tar uh, the, the cap off while hunting, then you would have a few issues. You could knock off your dial. They also wear it locking. Don't get me wrong, the LRS range of Ambitional, they do have locking turrets. And again, first focal plane. So I get it, it, it also depends on the product. This, however, really doesn't perform that different from the V6. The V6 has a slightly better glass on it. It does have edge to edge clearance and it's got a higher, slightly higher transmission on low light. But for a 750 to 800 pound scope, this would quite happily replace my V6. So if you don't have the budget to go up to a V6 and to get that extra performance, that and I, I'm talking just my, my new extra performance, then the Z4 might be just for you because the fact is it does bring your scope into a better budget and it's highly usable both on the range as well when you're hunting. It's, very, it's, highly, it's waterproof like them all. Uh, there's no issues with the misting. Uh, had no misting at all. Uh, and I was shooting in snowy, kind of horrible, misty weather. And this didn't really seem to pick up. The one thing it did do though, was it did pick up on Mirage quite badly. Now, sometimes you get that with a lot of higher end scopes as well. You, pick up every kind of detail and if there's a mirage out there um, you are going to pick it up. Now this did pick up the muzzle mirage quite quickly but that's to the testament of how good the optics are because you are picking out definition. However I was able to see through that mirage no problem at all. I think to be honest in my full conclusion in regards to the, the Zeiss Conquest V4 if, I think I would actually quite happily go and spend the £800 on this scope, even for a rim fire. Now, um, I've thought about it a hundred times, I've looked on eBay and everything and I've been so tempted, so, so tempted. When I did the Zeiss Victory V6 uh, review, I thought that was going to be ideal for the 6.5 Creedmoor. And it was just, <laughs> so I humped and I moaned and I humped and I moaned and then I said, right, okay, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna kind of nudge my wife to 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 um, to for me to buy it. So we finally did, and I landed up putting it on her rifle. So um, and everybody's pleased with it. Now I have to admit, though, if you can get to a kind of higher budget, yeah, up to double the price for the HT models, then I would, or the V6 models. You've got German glass on the V6 models. Your um, eye relief is a little bit better on the V6 models. Um, crystal clear edge to edge. You get crystal clear edge to edge on this, but the eye relief is slightly different. It's a little bit more harder to get. Um, however, once you get used to it, once you get used to the scope, it is fantastic. So for £800 mark, I do suggest the, the scope. scope I was sent an absolute cracking little set of binoculars. Again I reviewed the HT model which were phenomenal. Even my boss said, Glenn, Glenn Cadwalder of uh, Game Management Scotland said to me 
that he thought that the Zeiss HT binoculars had that little bit of an edge on his prized possession Swarovskis. Now, in low light, sorry, in low light. Now, that surprised me because he buys Swarovski for everything. Like, he's got a Z6i on his spare, uh, on his spare hunting rifle, on his main hunting rifle, he's got a Swarovski DS, and yes, fantastic. However, he kind of was put off size, and like a lot of people were put off size a few years back, when they kind of become a little bit stagnant and other brands were taking over. But Zeiss is genuinely coming back into its own. Now, again, I asked for a low price, a lower price product to try, because it's fine and dandy me turning around and saying to you on one video, right, you could do this at a budget and you, you don't need to spend a million pounds on a certain item or um, you could buy this for less than 150 quid or you could buy this for less than 500 pound and you can go away and you can become a, a good stalker without spending millions of money. Now, I decided, look, right, it was a bit hypocritical that I'm always doing products for on review that are high end. Now the reason for that is genuinely is that I like to play with high end stuff that I can't afford. I can't afford to spend £1,750 on a pair of binoculars. I would like to, I would love to, but I know for a fact that if I would be paranoid as hell every time I was out in the field. So they sent me these. These are the Terra ED range of binoculars. The ones that they sent me was the 8x42. Now, I have swore by Baron Stroud for a lot of years because they're under the £100 mark and they do the job that I need to do. And I've compared them with five, six hundred pound Vortexes and Bushnells and um, Minoxes and Nikons and various others. And to me, I've never really seen a difference. Now, I used the 8x42 and the 10x50 uh, sorry, 12x50 uh, Baron Strauss Saharas for a while, and I really love them. Now, the 8x42 Zeiss Terra each, uh, sorry, ED ones, are, um, are just phenomenal low light binoculars. They're f phenomenal picking up detail at five, six, seven hundred yards, or even out to a lot further than that. I wouldn't say that we would be going into the miles like the. Um, like the Victory HD ones were, the, the 10 by 52s or whatever they were. Um, I, I'm not saying that we would get the same quality out to that, that distance like those ones did. But for your average stocking, lightweight, easy to slip in a pocket or put on your belt with this handy case it comes with, binoculars for in the field for 400 and about 50 pounds, 450 pounds I've seen these for. This is phenomenal glass for that. Phenomenal. And it's the, the German glass and it's it's got a nice easy slide turret, center turret that you can focus in, not a problem. You can use it with the tip of your finger, no issues at all. It fits in your hand and fits in your pocket, no problem. As you see, it's about the size of my hand. It's um, it's very good low light, unbelievable low light. I've got a short video where I attached a little attachment to the the left lens, uh, this, and I put my mobile phone on it, and I was spying at oh, at nearly 400 yards the um, Sika feeding, and they were it was detailed, really good detail. I'll add this to the video. It's all on my phone. It is. A phenomenal piece of equipment. So again, you're not breaking the budget really when you're talking four hundred and fifty pound. When your average set of binoculars is about five to six hundred pounds. Now you want a decent pair of binoculars for the hill. Don't get me wrong, and these would more than do the job. Um, fantastic. Would I be buying a set? I would like to. I would like to, but at the moment my budget doesn't cover that. I wish it did, but it doesn't. And Zeiss don't really, uh, I don't ask Zeiss for, to keep products or anything like that, to, um, to get discounts on products or anything like that. I, I, I like playing with the stuff. 
I like coming you guys with my reviews and telling you what I personally think out in the field. Now, even though the deer season for me in regards to the night shooting and uh, the winter culls and that are over, I'm still back on the bucks and I'm still doing pest control and things like that at the minute. And these would be a great addition for you to slip in your jacket pocket when you're out shooting bucks or you're shooting roe deer in, um, in heavy cover. I was picking up the Sika um, as I said at 400 yards, all different ones uh, and heavy grass and trees and all sorts and it was perfect. I even had uh, my thermal running the other day there on uh, while I was out shooting rabbits and I was checking, it's not always good, easy to see through the scope um, what if a rabbit's sitting just inside the gorse or just inside a bush and I was scanning with these and I was picking up the rabbits at the edge of the, the bushes which normally some optics wouldn't pick up because they just look like a shadow. So I, I, was, I have been very well impressed with these. They're fully waterproof, they, they've got a good coating, they've got um, a great little, um, uh, they've got great feel, good grip, hand grip, um, they, they didn't steam up or mist up when I was using them in the motor, sometimes when it's wet, which it has been lately, that the uh, vinyls and stuff like that, especially the cheaper ones, were mist up, um, that I haven't had any issues with these at all. So. There we go, this is, that is Zeiss's lower range in regards to the, the optics. Now, for £800 and £450, for £1,250, you have a rifle scope and a pair of binoculars and they that are more 100% capable of doing the job of uh, items that are far more expensive than these are. And they're from Zeiss, a high quality brand name, a good quality customer service. Zeiss UK are phenomenal customer service. The good warranties, um, good after sales. Um, you get, when you buy in the, these Zeiss products, you are getting more than just the product. You are getting security that the after sales team will look after you if something goes wrong. Anyway, thank you for spending the time to listen to this view, review, review, the view. I'm hoping to get some um, thermal and night vision stuff uh, coming to me before the Northern Shooting Show. So we get, uh, get to play with that. Um, also, um, I'm eager to test more products that Zeiss want to throw my way. Um, hopefully that my relationship with Zeiss gets better. I'm hoping to get down to the Northern Shooting Show. It's uh, not looking likely at the moment, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. But um, if you want to pop me an email with any questions at david at fieldsportscotland.com. You, you, any questions about any of the products and reviews that I've ever, that I do or have done, I can give you an honest opinion on it. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I need the subscriptions because to be fair, I'm lacking in subscriptions. I'm, um, but the fact of the matter is, please subscribe to my channel and thank you again for watching Field Sports Scotland.